Okay, so we are recording now. <clears throat> and let me share the screen now. So share the screen. Second, and I'll go like that. And go like this. Sorry, it's not working quite yet. I gotta go like that, click that. Oh, I know what I didn't do. I didn't turn on my document camera. Huh, that wasn't very smart. Okay, I'm getting there. If you're wondering, no, I'm not an expert on Zoom. In fact, from time to time, I have to ask some of you guys how stuff works. Uh, yeah, please uh, turn off your volume. So everybody mute yourselves unless you want to unmute yourself to say something. Okay, my document camera is on. I know you're probably thinking, man, this teacher is real weird and dumb. <laughs> Took care. Um, Yes, my microphone, I had this issue last semester too. Um, I know my microphone is not so good and sorry, there's nothing I can do with this. is the computer they gave me. Um, so it, I check back later the audio, it kind of goes da, 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 and, you know, while I'm talking. Um, so that might happen when you say stuff too. So I guess whenever possible, communicate through chat because uh, somebody tried to say something to me a previous class and it was kind of funny and it kind of went chat, 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 chat or something like that. And yes, I realize that's going on. So sorry about that, but there's not much I can do about it, unfortunately. Okay, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is address people trying to add. Okay, people trying to add, there's a couple of things I need you to do. Okay, uh, you can now do something called a class ad request at City College. Okay, send me a class ad request. Okay, now I make these videos available through Canvas announcements. Okay, so, once we're done with the class, I'm, we're recording right now. Uh, I'll send it through Canvas announcements, but you don't get Canvas announcements if you're not in the class, okay? So uh, send me a class ad request. It should have your email there, and then I'll be able to email you um, the lecture from tonight, okay? And I think I said to all of you, every day until I finally let you in, you have to do the homework day by day, okay? That way I'm sure you're serious about it. Okay? Now, if I look at the schedule, that means 12.1, okay? So a way I can distinguish those of you that are serious and those of you that aren't serious, I was gonna say differentiate, but you know, ha ha, bad joke, right? Uh, I differentiate between you, but <clears throat> only math people get that. The way I can distinguish you folks, uh, who's serious and who's not. If you're really serious about being in class, you will do the homework and submit it to me by Thursday, okay? Now, I will say, just because you do turn in the homework does not guarantee you're gonna be in. If you don't do the homework, it doesn't mean you're not gonna be in either. Okay. I'll use that as a criterion for who gets in. I also have my original wait list. So I'll look at the wait list and if you're higher up in the priority, you have a better chance of getting in. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, give me a class ad request. It'll have your email address so that way I can email you the video. Uh, everybody else who's already in the class, you don't have to do this, you're in. You only submit the homework whenever we have exams. Okay, but for those of you trying to add, Okay, send me a class ad request. I will email you the video. Um, now you say, well, I'm not sure if I should get the book or I have the book. I will show you all the problems, okay? Now, by the way, the book is the same for Calc 2, which is you know, keep going. But I know some of you just joined or you just joined City College or you use a different book. Don't worry, I will show you everything. Okay? You can survive this class without ever giving the, getting the book, okay? Because I will go like this and it's being recorded, okay? And you'll see all the homework, you'll see all the questions and whatever key pages. And if you wanna do that the whole semester, that's fine by me, okay? So those of you trying to add, say, hmm, should I buy the book or not buy the book? I'll show you all the key pages okay? and it's being recorded. You can look that at the email later. And for those of you already enrolled, just look on Canvas announcements so you know how to do the homework, okay? Okay, so that takes care of everybody trying to add. I think you've got that. If you're not sure about something, send me an email or put it in the chat. So again, only people trying to add, send me a class ad request. It'll have your email address. I mean, if you want to get in a class, you got to send me a class ad request, right? Okay, I have your email. I'll email you the video and you submit to me Thursday, 12.1, if you're serious about getting in the class. Okay, all right. So that takes care of people trying to add. All right, uh, go ahead and put stuff in the chat. I won't be able to look at it for a while, but let me go over my rules and regulations. 
Okay, so I believe you all have this. If you never got it, send me an email <clears throat> about this. Some of you got it three times. Okay, uh, here are my email addresses. I also teach at the College of San Mateo, CSM. So that's my CSM email. The reason why I give both <clears throat> is almost every semester, either one or the other is down sometimes. So, uh, or maybe your email goes down, I don't know. Okay, so then um, you can send it to either email. Okay, here's my office hours. Okay, I know these are not very convenient hours, but I'm there, 410 to 435 on Zoom. I did send you the Zoom links for that. Okay, there's our class. Uh, here's our text. Uh, and for many of you, it's the same book as Calc 2. If you've never seen it before, this is what it looks like. Okay, I'm, I'm not really supposed to say this, but I don't care. I want to save you money. You don't have to buy it from the City College bookstore. If you can find it cheaper online, that's fine. Uh, you can sometimes get it cheaper used, uh, or maybe you can rent. If you find a good place to rent, go ahead and do that. Okay, or again, you say, I never want to buy the book. You can do that. I'll just show you the homework problem. So I'll just go like that and like that, and I'll do that the whole semester, and you've got all the homework problems. Okay. Okay, course description. Here it is. You can look at it or not. I'm legally required to put it. So there it is. Student learning outcome, same thing. I'm supposed to put it, so there, I put it. You can read it or not. Okay, protocol. You're expected to attend class every day, of course. Uh, bring your textbook, a scientific or a graphing calculator. Okay, you're not required to have a graphing calculator, but a scientific calculator is okay. <clears throat> um, most of our stuff is 3D. If you wanna know what we're covering, uh, this is basically, Calc 3 is three-dimensional calculus. Okay, there are some calculators that can graph 3D, but not too many, but I don't want you to use that. Okay, the only thing I want you to use is a scientific calculator. Now, the graphing calculators I have can't do 3D, they can only do 2D. Um, so I don't really want you to use it anyway. Okay. You are gonna have to do some 3D graphs. Um, you might say, I'm not an artist. Well, I'm not an artist either. Okay, just some basic 3D graphs uh, I'll have you do. So if you just want a quick, you know, couple of words, what is Calc 3 about? It's three-dimensional calculus, X, Y, and Z. Okay, uh, points may be lost due to absences, tardies, or leaving early. Okay, <clears throat> now, uh, you're expected to attend class the whole time, okay, even though many times I'll end class early. Okay, so instead of ending at, what is it, 825, we may end early. Okay, oh, I do want to say one thing. I think I sent it to you in the email, but our last day of class got changed. I thought it was going to be Tuesday, May 25th. It's now Thursday, May the 20th. Okay, so on the one hand, that's good. You have one less meeting, but on the other hand, that means if I go according to the schedule, the final exam would be the very day after I give you exam five. Okay, so there's no way around it unless I gain a date. We would have had the exact same number of days as before if we had ended on 525, we're ending on 520. Furthermore, there's a city college flex day on March 2nd, so I lost a day there too. Okay, so the only other possibility is I try to gain a day somewhere. So this is my tentative schedule, if I can gain a day and push everything up, that's possible, then we'll do it. Okay. Some of you who had me last semester, uh, we ended up gaining quite a few days as it turns out. So if I can kind of gain some days and push the schedule ahead, then maybe I can push the exam back to Thursday 513, then we're gonna have a day for review, but who knows, we'll see how it goes, okay? All right, uh, let's see, so okay. now, one nice thing about Zoom is I know exactly when people join. So if you join you know, early, I know. If you leave early, or you know, I know. If you join late, I know. So I know if you join at you know, 610, 605, 620, and so on, it's there. Okay? And you may say, oh, I'm gonna sneak out early. Um, I'll know that. Okay? So you're supposed to be here the whole time. Now, I do not distinguish between absence, tardy, and leaving early. They're all the same to me. You are contracting with me that you're gonna be in class from what, 6.10 to 8.25, unless you know, I end class early, which happens a lot and which might happen today. Okay. Now, I will excuse almost any reason that you have. If you have to be absent or you have to miss class, you gotta come late, you gotta leave early, just tell me any reason, I'll accept almost any reason. We're supposed to allow for much flexibility because of COVID and I'll accept almost any reason if you want. Okay, 
What's going to happen most meetings? Of course, lecture, maybe an in-class assignment, maybe a quiz. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a quiz today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about quizzes later. Okay, ignore this paragraph. Uh, this is if we met face-to-face -face about how I expect you to behave in class. Well, you know, normally if we met face-to-face, -face, I wouldn't want you to eat or drink in class and so on. This is kind of a moot point now because, you know, you can eat and drink if you're muted and, you know, that's perfectly fine. Okay, and this doesn't apply anymore, but I did send you something about getting extra help. Uh, there is a math lab. Uh, by the way, if you didn't get that, let me know. I may have put it on Canvas announcements, which means those of you that are trying to add, you didn't get this. Okay, but there is a link to uh, have a virtual City College math lab. So you don't, obviously don't go to Rosenberg 207, you can't get on campus, but there is a virtual math lab. So if you want the information on that, uh, let me know. Okay, attendance. If you have four or more unexcused absences, I might decide to drop you from the class. That's regardless of your academic standing. Okay. And again, I don't distinguish between tardy, leaving early, and absence. They're all the same to me. Okay. So again, if you want an excuse, give me your reason. Within 24 hours, okay, I think that's a good deadline. So if you have to skip class, you have to miss class, you have to leave early, you have to show up late, just give me a reason within 24 hours. Or better yet, if you know ahead of time, say, hey, I already know, you know, on February 17th or whatever, I have to work late or whatever. You know, if you know that ahead of time, that's perfectly fine. Okay, effective absence, you can read it. It basically says, you can be here, but I can still mark you absent if you are disruptive to the class, okay? It's pretty hard to disrupt the class right now if you're muted. The main way you disrupt the class is if you're unmuted and you start saying stuff if I hear your background or I hear the kids in the background or whatever, okay? So you probably don't have to worry too much about this. Homework. There's homework just about every class meeting, okay? You already have the entire homework for the whole semester. I email that to you. Okay, if you need any of these handouts, let me know. So the handouts are the syllabus, tentative schedule and the homework for the whole semester, right? So if you're missing any of these, let me know. <clears throat> now, from time to time, as I go through this, I might say, oh, I don't really like this problem. Throw out problem so-and-so. I also might say, hmm, I like such and such a problem. Go back and do problem whatever, okay? But this is 95%, this is pretty much gonna be the homework for the whole semester. Okay. It's pretty much chapter by chapter. Okay. So there's a chapter 12 test. There's a chapter 13 test, 14, 15, 16. Okay. We have the tentative dates already. Okay. So chapter 12 test, chapter 13 test, 14, 15, 16. Okay. You say, when do I turn into homework? Every time we have a test. So there's homework every class meeting. So you don't have to wait for me to say, oh, do such and such homework. As I'm doing that section, you automatically do it. So I'm gonna do 12.1 today. You automatically do this homework, okay? And likewise, next time, if I'm scheduled to do 12.2 and some of 12.3, yeah, how fast are we gonna go? I'm aiming for about a section and a half a day, okay? But, you know, we'll see how it goes as we go along. <clears throat> All right, so don't turn in the homework day by day or even week by week. It's only test by test. Again, except those of you that are trying to add to class. Those of you trying to add to class, you turn in 12.1 by Thursday. Okay. Just get your cell phone, you know, take a picture, click, 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 and email it to me. Okay. Uh, in case you're wondering, I don't do anything on Canvas pretty much except send Canvas announcements. Okay. Uh, your homework, your quizzes, your exams, they're all done. Just write it on a piece of paper, click, 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 uh, and send me an email for that. Okay. All right. Homework. Turn in the homework on exams. And by the way, those of you who are trying to add to class, this requirement still holds for you. Okay. I do have a 70% requirement for homework completion in order to have your exam graded. Okay. If you don't have at least 70% of the homework, I don't grade your test. Okay. I want you to do the homework. And there's something else I need to say about this. This has to do with the exams. So I'm gonna digress just a minute because we have the time for that. Okay, so this has to do with exams too. 
Okay, so you know, I know, we all know, if we're in COVID and under Zoom and all this, it is much, much easier to cheat on a test right now than if we were to meet face-to-face. -face. We all know that, that's obvious, okay? If we were meeting on campus, you know, I can walk around the room seeing, hmm, this person's texting or whatever, right? Uh, I would normally ask you to take your books off your desktop. I can tell if that's gonna happen. And, you know, good stuff like that. It's real easy to cheat, you know, right now under Zoom, it's not that hard to do, right? One safeguard that I have, okay, and by the way, yeah, I, I know some of the techniques of cheating, so, you know, I'm not that naive, <clears throat> but one thing about the homework, okay? So you submit the homework. I do look at the homework, not carefully. Okay? I just say, okay, you did it. Okay? And I look at your exam. Okay? <clears throat> one of the things about Canvas and submission on Canvas, you type the answers on Canvas, you can submit everything on Canvas. I never know what your writing looks like, which means I don't know who submitted it. Okay? Now, we were meeting face-to-face, -face, same thing. You'd write everything on paper, right? You would write all the homework, submit it to me. You would write all the quizzes, submit it to me. You would write the test, submit it to me. So I get to see what your writing is like. Okay? But, okay, if you just do everything on Canvas, maybe you just type everything, say, you know, I don't know what your writing looks like. How do I know you submitted it? So I see a sample of your writing when you submit your quizzes and homework. So you submit the homework, you submit the test, and I look at it. Now I'm not a handwriting expert, okay? But you can kind of tell, hey, you know, this homework and this test doesn't look like it was written by the same person, right? What's going on? So I would suspect cheating, obviously. <clears throat> and one other thing, obviously about homework, okay? You might find someone to cheat for you on the test. Okay? It's much, much harder for you to find someone who's willing to do all the homework for you and write it all out, <laughs> right? much less likely that's gonna happen, okay? So I would compare what you write in the homework and what you write in the test, the handwriting should look sort of the same, right? So that's one safeguard I have in terms of homework. Okay, quizzes. Okay, so here's how I do quizzes. By the way, some of you had me last semester. I'm gonna do quizzes a little bit differently this way, this time. Don't worry, we're not gonna have a quiz this time. Okay, so when we have a quiz, Let's see, our class ends at 825. So maybe around eight o'clock, I might just stop and say, okay, here are some quiz questions. I'll give you one or two or three quiz questions. I'll put you in the breakout rooms. Okay? <clears throat> so you will be in your group of three or four. Again, it's optional if you wanna turn on your camera or not, you know, I'm not gonna make you. I, mean, I personally think it's kind of weird if everybody is talking and you can't see anybody. <clears throat> All right, and you submit the quiz uh, then by 825. Okay, the, the end of the class meeting. Okay, and everybody puts down everybody's name in that group. Hopefully you all put the same thing. Okay, so let's say there's three or four in your group. You put your name down, you put everybody else's name down in your breakout room. Okay, all three or four of you submit the quiz. Okay, I will decide to grade only one person's quiz. Okay, and you're all gonna get the same grade. <clears throat> okay, so that way, you know, the straight A person can't just say, oh, I got the quiz. I don't care about anybody else. I got it, okay? No, because if you only submit yours and you're not helping anybody else, I might decide to grade not your quiz, but someone else's quiz. Okay, so your goal is to have everybody, all three or four of you to have the same thing, hopefully on the quiz, right? So that way it wouldn't matter which of you four or three, you know, I think you would all have the same thing and you would get the same grade on the quiz. Okay, so that's for quizzes. Okay, participation, it's 100 points. It's an easy 100. You only lose points if you, you know, do stuff I don't like, like your attendance starts going down or, you know, you unmute yourself and I hear your background noise and all that stuff. Now, from time to time, I might do this. And those of you that had me again last semester, this is different. I might just say, okay, in the chat, put down, what do you think is the answer? Okay, X squared minus five X plus six or something like that. Just type it in the chat. It's not a gotcha, okay? It's not meant to be, I'm gonna grade it right then and there, but I want you to at least try. Okay? So the worst thing you could do in that circumstance is to not put anything. And I get the chat, I can record the chat, I can look at who put something down, okay? So just because you got the answer wrong for an in-class you know, question, doesn't mean I'm gonna take off points. I may take off points if you don't put anything. So I want you to at least try, okay? <clears throat> so if I say, for instance, you know, I'm not going to give you anything this easy, but just for example, okay, what is uh, three plus five? Okay, so I want you to put down eight, but
but it doesn't mean I'm going to take away points if you put seven or nine. Okay. Now, if you want to be a smart addict, and, you, and when I say what's b plus five, and you put down, you know, x to the fifth minus five x to the fourth minus y prime or something like that, and okay, you're just being a smart addict. I might take off points for that. Okay. And if I don't see your name uh, for a response, that might count against you. Okay. So that's participation. By the way, if you skip out of class with no reason, that's an automatic negative four points. Okay. All right, uh, class netiquette, netiquette, class etiquette. Okay, I already went over a lot of this. You've seen me before. Okay, so when you join, please have your camera on. Okay, if you're conscientious about your background, you can have a fake background. Like if you want to put the Golden Gate Bridge or something, that's fine. Um, and uh, have your actual name okay, on my row sheet. Okay, don't put you know Lowell Grad 2020 or something like that. Okay, I I need your actual name. Have your camera on. Once I begin the lecture part, you can turn your camera off. Okay. Uh, and then after that, the only time I need you to have your camera on with the true background again is for exams. Okay. And yeah, we're in class. I know many of you are home, most of you are home, but you know, if you're going to show your camera, I prefer, you know, you're not wearing your pajamas or you're in your underwear or something like that. Okay. If you're going to do that, then, you know, turn off your video, obviously. But if you're going to have your camera on, you know, please. Dress like we're in class. Shared class list. If you're willing to share your email and or your phone number with others in the class, let me know. I'll compile that list. And by the way, these are separate. You might want to do both. You might say, oh, I only want to give my email, but I don't want to give my phone number or vice versa. You can do that. Okay. Uh, so let's pretend 20 of you want to be on the email list. I will email only those 20 people email list. If you don't want to be on it, you're not going to be on it, but you won't get anybody else's either, of course. Likewise, pretend uh, there's, I don't know, 25 of you that are willing to be on the phone number shared class list. Okay, then I will email only those 25 people the phone number list uh, and nobody else will get it. Okay, if nobody does it, you know, that's perfectly fine by me. Exams. There's five exams, okay, one for each chapter. You know the tentative dates already for the whole semester. Exam one, two, three, four, and five, wherever they are, and a final exam. Okay. Now, here's one way I think I might be able to gain time. Notice I've dedicated exam one, exam two, and so on. That's the whole time. I don't have to give you the whole time for some exam. That's two hours and 15 minutes. If I can sneak in a review, that's great. Okay. If I can um, do a question and answer session, that's great. Now I'll just go ahead and tell you the exams later on tend to be longer. Okay. You probably don't need the entire class period for exam one nor exam two, but some of the exams later get really, really long. I might decide to let you have the entire time for that, but we'll kind of see how it goes. That might be a way that I can gain you know, some time and try to move the test five back up to Thursday, 515, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Five exams. Okay. I don't allow TI-89. I happen to have a TI-89. It's too good. Okay, you can ask it to do some derivatives and integrals. It'll do it for you. Okay, that's how good. And you can ask it to solve any algebra question, any trig question. It'll we'll do all your derivatives, do all your integrals. It's, it's pretty scary what calculators can do nowadays. But I don't want you to do that. Okay, obviously, I want you to be able to think about what's going on. Okay, so the only promise I'll say is 50 minutes. Okay, although I will probably let you have longer. Okay. The reason why I say 50 minutes is you can take this class daily, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for an hour, which really means 50 minutes. Okay, so that were the case, that's going to happen. But if I can give you longer, I'd like to give you longer if possible. Okay, but for exam one and two, especially, I don't think you need the whole class time. Okay, in case you're wondering, yeah, it looks like I goofed here. I got exam two twice. So I'm not sure what I was doing there, but maybe that's a way I can gain a date. Okay, but we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll make lots of mistakes. Uh, as we shall see. All right, so that's that. Uh, cheating. I've got all this stuff about cheating. I can summarize in two words, don't cheat, okay, which is kind of obvious, okay, but I'll just tell you the ground rules. You can have one cheat sheet, one eight and a half by 11 cheat sheet. You can put any formulas that you want. In fact, I'll even help you and say, this is what I think you should put on your formula sheet. 
Okay, so standard size eight and a half by eleven, both sides, front and back. Okay. After that, you're not supposed to talk to anybody. You're not supposed to look in your book. You're not supposed to look at extra notes. You're not supposed to look on the computer for how it's done or all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you know the rules. Okay, so if I do find out somebody's, you know, cheating, I have to give you a zero for the test. Now I also have this. Okay, for each exam, I reserve the right to give an oral exam follow-up on Zoom. Okay, so if I think you're cheating, then hmm, your handwriting on the homework doesn't match the handwriting on the test. Or you put something that I didn't even cover. The way you did it is so out of whack. You know, I, I'm either going to not count it, or I might say, okay, John, I'm going to set up a Zoom meeting with you and show me how did you do problem five or how did you do problem eight. Okay, you'll know ahead of time. It won't be a surprise, okay, but you'll know that ahead of time. Okay, so your oral exam might replace your written exam score. If I think you're cheating on the written exam, okay, I might ask to meet with you one on one. Hmm, I'm not sure, you know, everything was on the level here. So I want to meet with you about that. Okay, so that's what that's about. Okay, disability. If you have a documented disability from DSPS, let me know. There's no extra credit. Ignore this paragraph on seating. That's if we met on campus, I might give a seating chart. There's obviously no seating chart now. Okay, final exam. It's worth 300 points. Okay, it's comprehensive. It's similar in content to the other exams. Okay, you should think of the final exam as being like three 100 point exams. You're not actually taking three 100 point exams. That's the way you're going to think of it. Okay, and then after that, you get to drop one. Okay, and this date is now off. So sorry, forget about that. We know it's going to be what? Um, 520. Thursday, May 20th. Right. Oh, yeah, some other things. Yes, uh, my audio is bad. I can't do anything about it. Sorry. Okay, the focusing is also bad. Okay, this document camera doesn't have an option for me to focus. I apologize for that. Now you may notice it gets better if I go like this, at least I think it gets better like that. That's because I'm lifting this up. Okay, I'm normally not gonna do that. I will show you stuff in the book. Sometimes I'll go like this, but this book is heavy. All right? I can't always do that. So I'm gonna put it down like this. So I apologize for that also, but that's the best that I can do for now. Okay, so here's my grade. Uh, breakdown. So 700 points on exams, 500 plus 300 plus final is 800. Go out one, 700. Quizzes are 100. Participation is 100. Participation, folks, is like extra credit. It's an easy 100 points. And my grading scale is 90, 80, 70, 60, as you can see right here. Okay, so that's it for introductions. Okay, what time is it now? About 6.45. Okay, let me check the chat and see get stuff in the chat. <clears throat> okay, so go back. Okay, somebody put some links as to how you can get the book. So thank you for those of you who did that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, a quick reminder again, if you heard me call your name, you don't have to say that I'm here on the chat. That just takes up extra chat. Just imagine if, from my standpoint, I could just say, I'm not gonna call row. Everybody just put in the chat that you're here. And then I stop and think about, you know, I don't want to read 45 chats where you just say that you're here. Okay, so please don't put it uh, unnecessarily, I suppose, is the way I can say it. Okay, and let's see. Okay, sorry, if, if I'm not saying anything, that's because I'm trying to read the chat and get stuff. Okay, yeah, if you join a minute late, uh, that's fine, put it in chat. Yeah, um, I'm not going to mark anybody late today. Uh, but now that you know, I'm starting class right at 6.10. So after, from here on out, I might mark you as tardy. Okay, so if you join late, uh, go ahead and put that in. And that's fine. Yes, I know my microphone is fuzzy. I can't do anything about that. Uh, let's see. I should have emailed you everything. Okay, if you didn't get it, send me an email, right? So I gave everybody, some of you three times, the syllabus. Schedule and the homework list. Okay, if you didn't get it, uh, let me know. And let's see. Let's 
Mm. All right. And there's some chat about Discord. If you want to do Discord, that's fine, obviously. And yeah, okay. I think we're caught up with that. All right. So I'm going to start a little bit. What time is it? 6.45. I was going to get started a little bit. Then we'll break. Okay, it's somewhere in the middle. Okay, so wind's in the middle. I don't know, 7, 7.05, 7.10 or whatever. We're probably going to finish early, but I'll get started with 12.1 otherwise. Um, so anybody else have a question right now? You can put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Otherwise, I'll get started with a little bit. So. Uh, excuse me? Yes, go ahead. So uh, you said that the final exam is broken down into three kind of three exams, 100 point exams. Does that mean that, like, for example, if we do well on all the previous exams, but, you know, there's a section that we do poorly on on the final exam, that that part of the final exam is dropped? Correct. Part of the final exam can be dropped if it's the lowest. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're not really taking three exams. You're just taking one exam. It looks like one exam. Okay, you will get the same score on it. Okay, so let's pretend your five tests are, I don't know, 85, 95, 80, 77, and 96. Okay, then you'll get one score on a final exam that's duplicated three times. So let's, get you, let's pretend you get a 90 on the final. In my grade book, it'll go 90, 90, 90. Uh -huh. okay. Now, let's pretend on the final exam, you only got a 60. It will look like 60, 60, 60. Oh, I see, okay. So then out of all the eight exams, you get to drop one. So you get to drop one of those 60s if it was your lowest, but not the other two. So it's not a good strategy to just skip the final. If you skip the final, it'll go zero, zero, zero. You get to drop one of the zeros, but not the other two zeros. And that would obviously lower your average considerably. All right, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, I know what you're saying about the mic. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, this is the computer that I'm given. I, I checked the quality and some of you can vouch for me last semester. You could hear it. It's, it kind of buzzed or something. It goes, blah, 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 zzz, but you can actually hear me. It's not very good, um, but I think you can still hear me, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, okay, do you mind if we submit any of the homework like through an iPad? Like I still hand write it, you know? But uh, I could just screenshot that and send it right to you. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. If you want to use an iPad, uh, some of you can type everything and make it look real nice and pretty. That's even better. Okay. I actually wish I had that. I'd have to learn how to do that too. But you know, that, that's ideal. If all of you had something where all the symbols, all the formulas, you know, look nice, you know, I'm going to be showing you a lot of this stuff. Okay. If I had a way and learn how to type everything nice and pretty and all that stuff, you know, that'd be ideal. But sure, that's fine if you want to do it that way. Okay, yeah, thank Any you. Any questions, please? Yeah, if you can always email me or put something in the chat, but otherwise I'm gonna go ahead and get started with a little bit of stuff now. All right, we are being recorded, we're recording. So I'm gonna turn off the, I'm not turning off the chat, I'm just not gonna look at the chat. You can still write stuff in the chat, but I won't be able to look at it as I'm doing this. Okay, so. We're going to start with 12.1. So here's the schedule. 12.1. That's all I was going to do today. And you should have the homework there. I'm going to do some of the homework. So as we're trying to add the class, you turn all of this in by next time. I'm going to do some of these problems. Okay. So as I do more and more problems, that's less that you have to do. Good deal. All right, so calc three is basically three dimensional calculus. So 12.1, if I can find the page now. So I'll get started with some of 12.1, we'll break and then we'll do more after the break. Okay, so vectors and the geometry of space. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you draw stuff like this. I can't draw stuff like this, okay. But introduction to Three-dimensional coordinate system, page 792. Okay, so up to now, I'll try to hold it like this. Okay. I can't hold it for very long, but it's being recorded. So you can get that hopefully very well. So up to now, all of your work has been X and Y. We're now gonna have X, Y, and Z, okay? There is a convention for X, Y, and Z, 
and that goes against what you would normally think of. Okay. Now, if I had to guess firsthand how I would do it, okay. So here's x and y, right, in two dimensions, and we have an xy ordered pair. Okay. So up to now we've said ordered pair. Can you guess what we're going to say now? Not ordered pair, but ordered triple. Okay. So for this class, for the most part, we're going to do ordered triples. Now I will freely confess, I say ordered pair so much, and I don't teach Calc 3 that much. So I might accidentally say ordered pair, but it, it means ordered triple. We're supposed to have ordered triples. Okay. Now, how do I get to the third dimension? Well, you can imagine you have X and Y, imagine that you're coming you know, out of the plane. Okay, so you know the plane of the paper. And my first guess was to say, leave X and Y alone and let Z come out, right? That's not the convention. Here is the convention. At first thought, you might say, that's really dumb. Why did they change it? There's actually a very good reason for it. Okay. Now, here's something else. The author, Mr. Stewart, okay, if, you, if you ever hear me say Mr. Stewart, I'm talking about the author. He makes a three-dimensional coordinate system looks like this. Okay. Here is X, Y, and Z. I'll try to hold it up again. Okay. X is coming out of the plane of the paper or the book. Y is to the right and Z is up. Okay. Now look at the way that he has that, which I don't like. I'll show you the way that I want you to do it. So I don't want you to do it this way. Okay. I can't point because I'm lifting up the book. Okay. But I don't want you to do it this way. Here's the way I want you to do it. So sorry, I'm mean and all that stuff. You got to do it my way. So if you do it this way, and not this way, I might take off points. Okay. So Y and Z are horizontal and vertical, just like the conventional X and Y. So if I kind of cover this up, if you look at this, that's your two dimensional coordinate system, right? Okay. But instead of X and Y, it's Y, positive Y to the right, positive, positive Z is up, and X, you have to pretend this is coming out at you. We're doing an illusion, as it were. So even though we write all like that, it's really coming out of the plane. So it's coming right at you, and negative x is going into the plane. Okay. So if you think of your two-dimensional piece of paper, x is really coming right directly at you, and negative x is going back. So here's positive x, here's positive y, and here's positive z. So that's the convention. I want you to use that same convention. And again, I want you to draw it like this. There's a good reason for this. You know, Y and Z are just like before. Y and Z just look like this, right? The only weird one is X. And again, it's not really an angle. Okay, so I mean, this looks like a 45 degree angle. It's not. You have to pretend you're looking at an angle where this is, they're still all at 90 degrees. Okay, so if I can fake it. Like that, that's meant to be a 90 degree angle just like this is a 90 degree angle. And this is even a 90 degree angle. Right? So can you kind of force your brain to see that looks like a 90 degree angle as normal, but this is also 90 degrees. This is all 90 degrees because you're looking at it at an angle. Okay, because I can't really have a coordinate system coming out into space. Okay, so positive X is coming out at you. Positive Y is to the right. Positive Z is up. There's actually a very good reason to change it. My first guess is, you know, why don't you just leave X alone, leave Y alone, and let Z be the one that changes. Okay, but there's a very good reason for this, which we'll explain later. Okay, now, from time to time, we will have just a first octant view. Okay, this is a first octant view, just like this is a first quadrant view. In two dimensions, you have four quadrants. In three dimensions, you have eight octants. O-C-T, oct for eight, there's eight octants. This is just a first octant view. Okay, if I can get my 2D Rubik's cube here and show this to you, right? If you can imagine this, you can see the eight octants that are there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on my Rubik's cube here, showing you the eight octants. Okay. So this is a first octant view. X is positive, Y is positive, Z is positive. We'll do that a lot. That's just like the first quadrant view, right? Four quadrants, one, two, three, four. 
in three dimensions, there are eight octants. Okay, if you can't see it, just imagine, you know, on the Rubik's cube, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, something else. In 2D, there's a convention. Quadrant one, two, three, four. There is no convention in 3D, except for the first octant. So first octant is the easiest one, the one we like. X, Y, and Z are all positive. Okay. Actually, if it were up to me, can you guess which one would be the eighth octant? Which one would I make the eighth octant? The one where they're all negative. Okay. But there's no convention for the other octants. Like, is the second octant X positive, Y negative, Z positive, or the fourth octant is plus, minus, minus, or whatever, right? There's no convention for that, okay? The only convention is the first octant, everything is positive. Okay. So just like we have four quadrants, we have eight octants, okay? <clears throat> and one way you can think of it is, you know how here it's plus, plus, uh, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, right? Okay. So in quadrant one, two, three, four, X, Y, okay? Quadrant one, they're both positive. Quadrant two, negative, positive, right? Quadrant three, they're both negative. Quadrant four, you have what? Positive, negative. Okay. Well, you can do the same kind of game for X, Y, Z, right? So quadrant one, X, Y, Z, positive, 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 okay? And then for the others, you can run through all the possibilities, right? There's two to the third or eight possibilities, right? Uh, plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. You computer science people are probably used to doing, you know, binary, right? Um, ones and zeros, there's eight possibilities. Two choices for this, either plus or minus, two choices for this, plus or minus, two choices for this, plus or minus. And yet if we're up to me, quadrant eight, how do you write eight <laughs> in Roman numerals? V I I I. I guess that would be all minuses. And then you know you have all the other possibilities. I don't feel like writing them all, but you got minus, plus, minus, and all the others, right? Because all those are possible. Okay. And during in this class, I will quite often, frequently refer to two dimensions. Okay. I will say, okay, remember what happened in two dimensions, and now here's what happens in three dimensions. Same thing as this. Okay. We call it ordered pair. Now we're gonna call it an ordered triple, X, Y, and Z. So take a look at this picture of an ordered triple, X, and this is positive, but of course we can go negative. So I walk out X, I go to the right for Y, I go up for Z. So here's my point in three space, three dimensions, the point X, Y, Z. So the point three comma four comma five, I go three out, four to the right, and then five up. That's exactly analogous to x comma y, right? So if I write five comma two, uh, let, me, let me say two comma five. So if I say two comma five, you know from the origin, I go two right, five up, okay? So for triple, if I say five, two, three, five out, two right, three up, okay? We have the origin also, okay? In 2D, the origin is zero, zero. Can you guess the origin coordinates in 3D? It won't be zero, zero, it'll be what? Zero, zero, zero. So the origin is zero, zero, zero. Very logical. So a lot of times I refer to back to 2D and I say, okay, remember in two dimensions we did blah, blah, blah. And now in 3D, we do this. Okay. Now let's look at the coordinate planes so let's look at this picture, figure three. And yeah, that's better focus, but I'm holding up the book and I can't do this all day. So here it is. All right, take a look, you have the X, Z plane, the Y, Z plane, and the X, Y plane. Okay. One, the ways you can think of the X, Y plane, sorry, you can't see it, the X, Y plane, Think of it as the plane of the floor. The floor that you're right, they're on right now is the XY plane. So the XY plane that you're used to in two dimensions, think of it as the floor. Okay. Now the floor represents a plane. Okay. Think of that's the floor and the Z value, the height is zero. Okay. So imagine I'm pointing to the floor right now. That's my XYZ 
y, x, y plane, z is zero, and then I move up. So z is one, z is two, z is three, z is four, and so on, right? The y, z plane, that's like the plane of the paper. Okay? That's what we used to call the x, y plane. That's now the y, z plane where x is equal to zero. That means you're not coming out of the paper, you're not going into the paper. Okay? The only one that's a little bit different that you may not be that comfortable with is the x, z plane. Okay, that's kind of the plane going like so, like so. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's y equals zero. So I've got this here. And by the way, if you want to put this on your formula sheet and your cheat sheet, you may. This is fairly elementary. I mean, you, you, I'm only going to give you one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So you kind of have to budget on your paper what you want to put down. But uh, here we go. The xy plane is z equals zero. xz plane is y equals zero. And yz plane is x equals zero. One simple way you can think of it is whatever letter equals zero, that's the plane of the other two letters. Okay, again, z equals zero. Okay, that's your x, y plane that you learned before. And think of that as z equals zero. So z is gonna represent the height before y represented the height, right? Now z is gonna represent the height. So think of the plane of the floor. If we, were, if we were meeting face to face, I would literally point to the floor. But now think of the floor as z equals zero. And then if you think of the floor, it's your normal x and y. And then you go up, z is one, two, three. Now I can go down, go below the floor, and z is negative one, negative two, and so on. Right? So that's the xy plane. x equals zero. Now remember, x is, x is coming out at you or going in to the board or paper as it were. So if x equals zero, that's the y, z plane. That's the same as this plane right here. That's the plane that we normally wrote before as the x, y plane. Okay? Because if x equals zero, you're not coming out, you're not going back. Okay? So imagine I'm coming out of the paper, one unit, two units, three units. I'm going back into the paper, negative one, negative two, and so on. So if x equals zero, you have the y, z plane. And then y equals zero, that's the x, z plane. That's kind of like this, okay? So imagine y equals zero. So that means you're right here. But you're allowed to move x anywhere you want. You're allowed to move z anywhere you want. So if you can, in your mind, imagine you're in 3D now, three space, the x and the z plane and have it keep going. You're gonna have this plane like so, where x coming this way can go wherever you want and z can go wherever you want. So here's a way that you can categorize each of the planes. Okay. And one other thing I want to show you, and what time is it? Then we'll break probably after this. Um, show you this picture right here. Okay. Again, I don't want you to draw it like this. I want you to draw it where Y and Z are horizontal and vertical. Because it's easier to draw. And just let X be the oddball one where it looks like it's slanted at a 45 degree angle. Remember, it really means you're walking out, right? So when I'm right here, I'm walking out of the paper. Here I'm walking into the paper, so to speak. Okay, so here's the point A, B, C. This is the first octet angle. So you go A this way, B this way, C this way. Okay, I want you to look at the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. So notice this is A, zero, zero. So here's the origin. You walk A this way, then you don't go anywhere in the Y direction, which is left to right, and you don't go anywhere up or down, A, zero, zero. Okay. Look at this point, zero, B, zero. You don't go anywhere for X. That means you don't go out of the paper or into the paper. You go B units to the right, and see, to me, that doesn't look like it's going to the right, so that's why I prefer you to write it like that. And you don't go anywhere up. And then zero, zero, C on the Z axis. That means you're going C units straight up. You're not going left or right. And you're not going anywhere in the X direction, which is out or back. So notice X axis, Y and Z are zero. Y axis, X and Z are zero. Z axis, X and Y are zero. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this quickly and then we'll break. 
So here's a first octant look, first octant angle. Okay. That's like the first quadrant. Everything's positive. We like it. We like this. But of course, obviously, there's going to be a lot of negatives. So this is a 3D picture. This is like this picture. This is the first octant angle. Everything's positive. First quadrant angle. Everything's positive. Okay. So if I'm on the x-axis, both y and z are zero. If I'm on the y-axis, x and z are zero. If I'm on the z-axis, x and y are zero. Okay, do you wanna put that in your formula sheet? It's up to you. After a while, you, hopefully you get the idea or you can derive it. Okay, zero, zero, z, x, zero, 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 y, zero. <clears throat> now, you do know this by analogy in 2D. What happened in two dimensions? Remember if you had a point on the x-axis of the x-intercept, remember what does x-intercept mean? Y is zero, right? Take a look at this point, x comma zero. If you had a y-intercept, zero on the y-axis, that means you let x equal zero, right? So same thing here, okay? So x-axis, y and z are zero, y-axis, x and z are zero, and z-axis, x and y are zero, okay? All right, so that's that. Okay, um, I'm going to show you in the recording some key pages. So page 796, you say, I don't want to buy the book. Here's the problems. So I'm going to show it to you. I'm kind of holding it up, but it's book is heavy. Show you more problems there and there and there. If that didn't give you enough time, don't worry. Just look at the recording later. And here's some more problems there, and there, and over here, and here. You may not have to do all these problems, of course, but I don't know right now. So, and there's some more, and there's some more, and there's that, and this book sure is heavy. And yeah, that's it. Okay, now I'll show you also this. The formula you need, distance formula, page 795. If you want to put this on your cheat sheet, you may. It's completely analogous to what happened in 2D. Okay. This is between point one and two. Square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. It's a distance formula in space. Now, in two dimensions, you had this as a distance formula in 2D, x2 minus x1 squared, y2 minus y1 squared. What happens in three dimension? Z2 minus z1 squared, very logical. And then formula for a sphere, the equation of a sphere. And where am I? The bottom of 795, okay. Now in 2D, okay, circle. Centered at h comma k radius r, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. I don't have any more fingers to point it to you, but you can see it there. So what happens in 3D? Just add the z part, very logical. So for a sphere, centered at h k l radius is r. Here's an example picture. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r squared. You should already know that from your earlier algebra. So just add the third dimension. Okay. If the center is the origin, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. Just like if I took out the z, this is a circle center of the origin, radius r. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Just add the third dimension, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. Okay, so that's that. All right, so we're going to break right now. Oh boy, it's seven ten ish. Okay, so we'll break until mm, seven twenty three, something like that. Seven twenty three, seven twenty four, roughly. Okay, so break time. Uh, I will stop to share, and I might disappear also. So, um, oh, well, okay, seven twenty three, seven twenty four, something like that. Now, I'm also going to disappear too, but you can go ahead and put stuff in the chat, also. All right, thank you.
I'll start up in about another minute, folks. <clears throat> All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, so get back to where we were. We're still recording. <clears throat> a quick word, when you look at the video later, um, we were recording the whole time. <clears throat> I found out the last semester that if I stopped the video and started back up, I run into problems. So if you look at the video later, even the break is being recorded. So just fast forward the 10 or 15 minute break that we have. I know it's kind of a waste, but I knew that worked. and. What didn't work sometimes is I stop the video and then start back up and I ran into trouble. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do it this way for now. You'll have that um, 10 or 15 minute break where nothing's happening and just you know, fast forward to where you need to go. Okay, so let me go back and share the screen and start looking at the homework. Okay. I think somebody out there is not muted. So again, please mute yourself. I hear some background noise. All right, so I'll just talk a little bit slower on this. Okay, so the distance formula in three dimensions, so the distance 795, okay? It's just the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Okay, so if I have a point x1, y1, z1, point one, up to x2, y2, z2. So you're going in three dimensions from here to here, you could apply the Pythagorean theorem on this. This is a two dimensional picture here. And then take that distance here and come straight up and the Pythagorean theorem applies there also. Okay, bottom line, it's just what you expect it to be. You can convince yourself that that works. At the same time, I won't go through that, but it's sort of the three dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and you end up with this distance formula. Okay, so the distance from point P1 to P2, which have coordinates X1, Y1, Z1, and X2, Y2, Z2, is the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared plus Z2 minus Z1 squared. Again, in two dimensions, this was the distance formula. In three dimensions, just add on Z2 minus Z1 squared. Okay. And something you should know, uh, it doesn't really matter which way you subtract, so if we go x1 minus x2, that's the same thing. So let's say if you go four minus six, that's negative two. If you go six minus four, that's positive two. But in either case, when you square it, you still get four. Okay, so that being the case, if it doesn't matter which way you subtract, try to prefer to subtract so that you get positive, obviously. Okay. And since we know this is the distance formula, okay, that gives you the set of all points on a sphere. Because if you're given a point, called the center, HKL. Now you want to say, give me all the points that are the same distance away, call it R. Okay, so by using the distance formula, you would get this. Uh, you would go X minus H squared plus H minus, uh, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared plus Z minus L squared is equal to R squared. And it gets you the formula for the equation of a sphere. So the center is H, KL, just like over here, that was the equation of a circle in two dimensions. <clears throat> and centered at the origin in two dimensions, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Three dimensions, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. Okay, it's your choice whether you want to memorize it or put it on your formula sheet. I don't think it's that hard to memorize. Remember, you have a limited amount of stuff that you can put on your cheat sheet for exams. So, you know, if you really want it, you can put it, but that's less space for you to put other stuff. Okay, so let's get started with the homework that I already showed you, 12.1. Okay, and my normal mode of operation is, okay, here's the homework. I end up doing a lot of the homework anyway. Okay, 
So just to tell you, I was planning to show you 3, 7, 9, 11, B, 15, 19, 23, A, B, C, 25. You don't have to write all this down because I'll get it for you later. Okay. In other words, I end up doing a lot of the problems anyway. So that's one lesson you have to do. Okay. That includes those of you still trying to add. Say, man, I got to do all this homework. <laughs> I'm going to end up doing quite a bit of it anyway. Okay. All right. So the rest of today, I'll do some problems. Number three, which of the points A, negative four, zero, negative one, B, three, one, negative five, and C, two, four, six is closest to the YZ plane, which point lies in the XZ plane? So how do I do that? By the way, you don't have to actually graph this, but you can do it without graphing if you know what's going on. So the first thing you wanna get used to is the order triple, right? We're used to X comma Y, now it's X comma Y comma Z. Okay. And again, if you're like me, you're going to end up saying order trip instead of order triple, say order pair. Because all my previous classes, right, the ones that I taught and you learn, algebra, <clears throat> trig, pre-calc, there's always ordered pair, ordered pair, ordered pair, ordered pair, right? So I might accidentally slip and say order pair, but we know it's order triple. All right, so I've got the points here. Here they are. Now, it says... Which point is closest to the YZ plane? Okay. You don't have to draw the picture. Just think, what does the YZ plane mean? The YZ plane means X equals zero. Okay. So which is closest to the YZ plane? That means closest to X equals zero. Now, if X equals zero, well, you're going to walk out positive, or you might walk in negative. So you just look at the X coordinates and which has the smallest absolute value. Okay, think of it this way, the X, Z plane. Oh, I'm sorry, Y, Z plane, my bad. Y, Z plane, but we know it means X equals zero. Okay, that is this plane. It's what we used to call the X, Y plane. Okay. So that means I'm going to come out, I'm going to go back. Okay. So I go back negative four, or I come out two. So I just want the number with the smallest absolute value of the x-coordinates. So this is four units away from x equals zero. All right? So I go back four, I'm four units away. This is three units away, this is two units away. So the answer is C, it's only two units away from the yz plane, meaning x equals zero. And then it says, which point is on the XZ plane? On the XZ plane, we now know means Y equals zero. So which point has Y equals zero? A, that's all. So that's it for that one. Okay, and you might be saying, do I have to take notes? You can or cannot, it's up to you. Everything's being recorded. So if you just wanna look at the video later, that's fine. Seven. Now, you have to draw some things in three dimensions. Not much. I'm not a good artist. You would never confuse me with an artist. Okay, but you want to be able to draw some stuff. Describe and sketch the surface in R3. Okay, R3 is the three dimensional coordinate system. R2 is your normal XY plane. R1, or just R, is the real number line. Right? So when you see that funny looking R, same as R1, this is the number line. R2, XY plane. R3, X, Y, Z space. Okay, X plus Y equals two. Now, do you recall in two dimensions, what does X plus Y equals two look like? Just think about it. You don't have to unmute yourself or answer it. But what's the shape of X plus Y equals two in two dimensions? It was a line, wasn't it? You can make it look like Y equals negative X plus two, Y equals MX plus B, right? Right, so here's the way you want to think of it. X plus Y equals two is a line in 2D. Now add the, the third dimension. Z can change. So Z goes up, Z goes down. Okay, you end up with a plane. Okay, now here's how I illustrate this with my feeble graph here. X plus Y equals two. 
all right? In two dimensions, I would say two comma zero, zero comma two, right? You can all do that. 3D, if I'm on the floor, I'm pointing to the floor, two zero zero, zero two zero. These two points definitely fit this, right? X plus Y equals two. In fact, one way you can think of this, all the math that you've been doing so far in X and Y, it was really in three dimensions, but all along Z was equal to zero. You could think of it that way, right? Hidden behind the scenes, there was a third dimension. We let Z be zero, and we never thought about it and just did everything in X and Y. Now we're gonna let Z equal one, two, negative one, negative a million, whatever you feel like. Okay, so if I just have two zero zero and zero two zero, there's my line. Then imagine taking that line and raising it up or down. Make it go up or down. So you have two zero one and zero two one, one unit up, one unit up. So you end up with a plane. So here's my drawing of that plane. Take this line, move it up or down. Imagine, take, you know, just put a line on your paper. I know, have this. And then just make it go up or down. It's hard for me to even show you that, but just let it go up or down and you have this plane. Okay, so that's that. Okay, number nine. There's a triangle in space. These are three points in space. Just because you're in space, if you have three different points, as long as they're not on the same line, you still have a triangle, right? Okay, so I pick a point here, then another point here, another point here. In space, you can still see a triangle, right? So there's a space triangle. Find the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. So three, negative two, negative three, seven, zero, one, one, two, one. So I use a distance formula three times. Is it a right triangle? Is it an isosceles triangle? Well, what does an isosceles triangle mean? You have at least two sides that are the same. So if, I've signed, if I have two lengths that are the same, it's isosceles. How do I tell if it's a right triangle? Well, then it's gotta be Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. So here we go. Here are the points. I find the distance from P to Q. I'm gonna write it as PQ. I find P to R and Q to R. I use this formula. I'll raise it up so you can look at the video later, but I can't hold it that long. Okay, so distance formula, PQ, seven minus three squared plus negative two minus zero squared plus negative three minus one squared. Just subtract. Subtract the X's, square it. Subtract the Y's, square it. Subtract the Z, square it, add them all up. Okay, seven minus three is four, four squared is 16. Negative two minus zero is negative two, square root is four. Negative three minus one is negative four, square root is 16. Add them all up, square root of 36, six. So the distance from P to Q is six units. Okay, QR, same thing. Okay, so square root, seven minus one squared, plus zero minus two squared, plus one minus one squared. I like one minus one squared, that's zero, right? Okay, seven minus one is six, six squared is 36. Remember, you're just subtracting. Sub subtract X, square it. Subtract Y, square it. Subtract Z, square it. Add them all up, take the square root. 36 plus four plus nothing. Square root of 40, take out the four, two radical 10. And then the distance from P to R. So from here to here. So that minus that squared plus that minus that squared, plus that minus that squared. <clears throat> so square root of three minus one squared plus negative two minus two squared plus negative three minus one squared. Three minus one is two, two squared is four. Negative four squared is 16. Negative four squared, 16. Add them up, square root of 36, six. So six, six, and two radical 10. So it's isosceles. Okay, but you can square this, square this, square this, they don't add up. Okay, six squared is 36, this squared is 36, this squared is 40. Okay, so my conclusion is that we have an isosceles triangle, but it's not a right triangle. Okay, 
Okay. All right, I will do 11B as in boy for you. Determine whether the points line is straight line. Hmm. How do you tell in space now, okay, a point here, point here, point here. How do you know if they're all on the same straight line? Okay, well, let's think what happens in two dimensions. Two dimensions. Let's go like that. A, B, C. What has to be true if they're on the same straight line? Well, and yeah, as opposed to something like that, A, B, C, you get a triangle. That's a pretty bad triangle, but you get the idea. Okay, well, the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C should be the distance from A to C. That's not gonna happen over here, right? Well, it just puts a picture in space. In fact, there, I'm looking up the paper there. Now that same picture is in space, right? Okay, point here, point here, point here. So two of the distances have to add up to a third. That's all. Otherwise, it's the same thing. Okay, so here's the points. So I find a distance from D to E, D, E, E, F, and D, F. So D to E, square root of zero minus one squared, plus negative five minus a negative two squared, plus five minus four squared. Zero minus one is negative one, square root is one. Negative five minus a minus two is negative three, squared you get nine, five minus four is one, one squared is one, radical 11. Do the same thing with EF and DF. So this is from E to F, one minus three squared, plus negative two minus four squared, plus four minus two squared. 4 plus 36 plus 4, 44. 44 is 4 times 11, 2 radical 11. And then DF, 0 minus 3 squared plus negative 5 minus 4 squared plus 5 minus 2 squared. 0 minus 3, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9 squared is 81. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Add them up, 99. 99 is 9 times 11, 3 radical 11. Radical 11, 2 radical 11, 3 radical 11. Uh huh. So DE plus EF is equal to DF, so the answer is yes. Okay. If no two of them add up to the, the third, then the answer is no, which means you have a triangle, essentially. That's one way you can tell in space now, point one, Point two, point three. Do you have a triangle or do you have a line? Okay. This is how you determine if two of the distances add up to a third. Okay. Okay. In case you didn't catch the drift already, you might be saying, "Hey, he's doing problems right off the homework." That's right. That means your homework assignment is already shortened. And for those of you that have to turn in the homework because you're trying to add, I've shortened your assignment for you. Okay. Fifteen. Find the equation of the sphere that passes through, oops, passes through four, three, negative one, and has center three, eight, one. Okay, automatically, this tells me it's gonna be x minus three squared plus y minus eight squared plus z minus one squared, just by using the formula. That's a guarantee. <clears throat> How do I find the radius? It's just the distance between these two. So I just use the distance formula and that'll be my radius, and then I'm done. Okay, so I'm using this thing. Okay, center HKL, radius R, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared plus Z minus L squared equals R squared. So automatically, I know it's going to be Cover this up, x minus three squared plus y minus eight squared plus z minus one squared. What's the radius? The distance from here to here. So here we go, three minus four squared 
plus 8 minus 3 squared plus 1 minus a minus 1 squared. Hmm. Negative 1 squared is 1. 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. Radical 30. Okay. The formula is R squared. So 30. So here's the answer. X minus 3 squared plus Y minus 8 squared plus Z minus 1 squared is equal to 30. Okay, 17 and 19. Show the equation represents a sphere and find its center and read it. So they give you this funny looking thing. We have to make it look like, make the equation look like, can't turn the page here. Make it look like that. In order to do that, we have to complete the square. Do you guys remember completing the square in your earlier algebra? Okay, so here's 19. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is divide everything by two. I don't want two x squared, two y squared, two. I want just x squared. So divide by two, divide by two, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals four x minus 12z plus a half. Yeah, unfortunately I got a half there, but we can't do anything about it. Okay, move these two guys over to the left side. There's no y, so I don't have to worry about it. So subtract the 4x, it becomes x squared minus 4x. Add 12z, z squared plus 12z. If they gave me something with a y, like 8y, I do something with a y. But I just leave as y squared. Okay, now do you recall completing the square, right? You take half the coefficient of x and square it. Okay, so what's half of negative 4? negative two, square it, four. So add four to both sides. Remember doing that in your earlier work? Same thing here, z squared plus 12z. <clears throat> Take half the coefficient and square it. Half the coefficient of z. So half of 12, six, square it, 36. So plus 36, plus 36. Factor this, factor this. You don't have to factor this, it's already good. Okay, this is 40 and one half, 81 over two. I'll raise it up again, so focusing. Okay, so when you look at the video later, I mean, some of it is focused. All right, this factors into x minus two squared. Y squared, just leave it alone. This factors into z plus six squared. Okay, so I can read off the center. Now remember in the formula, it goes X minus blah, 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 Y minus and Z minus. So you actually have to change the sign here. So the center is two, zero, negative six. It's not negative two, zero, six. You might recall, you have to change the sign of that and change the sign of that. So the center is two, zero, negative six and the radius is nine over radical two. Okay, so what does this thing look like in space? In 3D, we're in three dimensions now, right? The center is two, zero, negative six. That's two out. Don't go anywhere in the Y direction and go six down. That'd be down here somewhere. And the radius is this funny thing. Okay, so in three dimensions, that's what you have. Okay. What time is it? Oh, we're doing fine time-wise. Should be able to finish, no problem at all. All right. 23, find the equations of the spheres, plural, with center two, negative three, six. Now this should be a giveaway, right? You automatically know it's gonna be X minus two squared plus Y minus a minus three or Y plus three squared plus Z minus six squared equals blah, blah, blah. Okay. That touch the X, Y plane, Y, Z plane and X, Z plane and by that language, they imply it as a tangent, okay? So these are the centers and you are tangent to each of the planes. Okay. Hmm, that's gonna be a little bit tricky. Let me go back and show you what's going on here. Okay, 
I don't know if I can illustrate this that well, but here's a point in space. I'm going to make it in the first octant, okay, right here. Tangent to the xz plane. Can you imagine going back to the xz plane? You just barely graze it, right? So this would be the distance. What is that distance? It's just the y coordinate, or strictly speaking, the absolute value of the y coordinate. Okay, take this point. Remember, I'm in the first octant. I want to go tangent to the yz plane. So imagine a sphere that just barely grazes the yz plane. So I want this distance. That would just be the x coordinate, distance from the yz plane out to the point. And similarly, if I want a point tangent to the xy plane, you're going straight down, you just barely graze it. If you look at what I'm doing right here, I'm just getting the z coordinate, or strictly speaking, the absolute value of the z coordinate if it happens to be below. Okay. That's all, all I'm doing in each case. So for part A, xy plane means z equals zero. You barely graze it at z equals zero. That means the radius is six. x minus two squared plus y plus three squared plus z minus six squared equals six squared 36. The yz plane means x equals zero. What's the radius? Distance from zero to two? Two. So all this stuff is exactly the same, except radius is two, so this is going to be four. And finally, the xz plane, y equals zero. How far is it from y equals zero to y equals negative three? That's three units away. That's three units to the left. So in this picture, y equals negative three, that's back here somewhere. Can you imagine I'm going back here over here at y equals negative three. So the distance from here, and if I go tangent right over there, that's three units from negative three to y equals zero, which is the xz plane. That means I want the radius to be three. So do all this the same, and that's going to be nine. Okay. And that's pretty much about it for that. Okay, then uh, 25 and on, 23 to 37. Okay. So here's the assignment, but what I end up doing, half of it, maybe even more than half. Okay, so there's not that much to do in reality. All right. And then we're done. Hey, maybe I can sneak in a little of the next section. Okay, what time is it? Oh, we still have half an hour. Describe in words the region of R3. If you can't read it, almost always in this book is going to be R3, unless it says otherwise. It's very hard to see the three. There, now you can see the three, but this book is heavy. I'm going to bring it back down. <clears throat> Describe in words uh, the region. Okay, and if possible, I'm going to sketch it. All right, so let's see. 25 says x equals five. Think back in two dimensions. I'll cover this up for a moment. What was x equals five in two dimensions? Vertical line, right? five comma y, which means x was stuck at five, but y can be free to roam, you get a line. In 3D, five y z, x has to be five, okay? You're walking out five units. So imagine you're walking out one, two, three, four, five. Y can do anything, left and right. Z can do anything up and down. You have two dimensional infinity. You've got a plane. Okay. So whereas x equals five in 2D is a line, x equals five in 3D is a plane because you have two dimensions that are free to roam, two degrees of freedom, sometimes say. Here you have what's called one degree of freedom. You don't have to write that down, but sometimes that's said two degrees of freedom, one degree of freedom. So you have to walk out five units, but y, which goes left and right, Free to roam, 
Z freedom of, so you end up with a plane. To describe it, a plane parallel to the YZ plane and five units in front of it. Okay, so think if you've got the YZ plane. Okay, the YZ plane is now what we used to call the XY plane. So imagine taking a piece of paper. Okay, can't show it very well. Take your ordinary piece of paper and move it out five units. That gives you a plane. Okay, look at my small, I'll just use my cell phone. <laughs> okay, this represents the YZ plane. Now just move it five units out. You still get a plane and it's five units in front of it. So here's a description, a plane parallel to the YZ plane, five units in front of it. That's all. Okay, 29. Zero less than or equal to Z less than or equal to six. Okay. Another way to think of this is there's no restriction on X, no restriction on Y. Now we are now claiming Z is the height. Okay, so. Maybe I should write that down now. Z equals the height. In two dimensions, what was the height? Y. In three dimensions, Z is the height. So again, think of the floor. Everybody think of your floor right now. You're on the floor, think of your normal X and Y, and Z comes up. So you come up, 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 Z moves. Z equals zero is the XY plane. Z equals six is six units up. A very good analogy is this is the sixth floor. Can you imagine you're at Z equals zero, you're on the floor and you come up, you press the elevator button, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I'm on the sixth floor. And you can go anywhere you want for X and Y, okay? So you have Z equals zero, Z equals six. If you have this description, you have everything between it also. You have an infinite sandwich. Okay, can you imagine an infinite sandwich? Z equals zero. Take the whole floor. Remember, it's infinite. Okay, we're speaking in terms of infinite. I know we usually think of finite stuff. Okay, but take your floor, pretend it goes infinitely in X and Y. Okay, remember, Z equals zero is now the XY plane what we used to call the XY plane, right? Put it on the floor. Okay, I'm just taking this picture. I'm literally putting it on the floor now. Okay, I'm bringing it back up. Okay, so that's Z equals zero. Imagine that plane goes up six units. Six floor. Okay, so Z equals zero. You're on the zeroth floor, I guess you'd say. You go to the sixth floor. Now you can walk anywhere you want in X coming out of the paper or in the paper, and you can go anywhere you want for Y. So it's almost like literally you're on the sixth floor where you can walk anywhere you want. And, oh, I wanna go vertically, then get on the elevator and, or walk, and now you're in the fifth floor, fourth floor, down to the zeroth floor, okay? You want everything between the two, so you have this infinite sandwich. Okay, the top of the sandwich is Z equals six. The bottom of the sandwich is Z equals zero. Remember the infinite, and you have everything in between. Okay, so that's why I call it an infinite sandwich. I can't draw it, but if you can imagine that, just take the floor, goes infinitely far, move it up six units and everything in between. Okay, I was gonna show you 35 and 37, then I'm done. And what time is it? Eight o'clock? Okay, you might hate me for this, but I'll maybe stay just a little bit about 12 to, just in order to get ahead. Okay, so I can, but it won't be any homework. So those of you that have to turn in homework, Thursday, because you're trying to add, you're not going to get any more homework. But maybe I'll just say a little. I know from experience, even if I say just very little, it does help for the next day, you know, because we have one last day over here. Okay, 35. One is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared less than or equal to five. Okay, that should not really be that hard if you stop and think about it. 
I already got the answer there, but pretend you don't see it. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals one. Pretend it says equals one. Sphere centered where? Origin. <clears throat> okay, what are the coordinates of the origin now? Not zero, zero. We have to say zero, zero, zero. And the radius is square root of one, which is one. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals five. Sphere, center of the origin. The radius is not five. The radius is the square root of five. It says equal. And then less than or equal to, less than or equal to. So you have the two spheres, center of the origin, radius of one, radius is five, and all the points between them. Okay, I made my attempt at such a, okay, see this tiny little ball right there? That's supposed to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. The outside is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals five. The radius is square root of five, 2.2. And you have everything in between. So imagine if you have a hollowed out ball, okay? Or imagine some fruit. I don't know if there's any fruit exactly like this, but it's completely spherical. Is there any fruit that's completely spherical? I don't know, but there's a pit in the middle, right? Okay, so imagine a fruit that's completely spherical and there's a pit in the middle, throw out the pit. So you, it, you have a hole there. So you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one, all the points on the unit sphere. Yeah, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one is a unit sphere, just like x squared plus y squared equals one is a unit circle in two dimensions. Unit sphere, sphere center of the origin, radius of one. And x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals five, radius is radical five, and you have everything in between. Okay, so that's what it looks like. <clears throat> Okay, side note, but you'll need this theme later. I can't draw this. But you know what would happen if I didn't have, yeah, the problem's finished, but I'll dig deeper. What is the time? Is it eight o'clock? I think we have time. If I had like that, I would not include the sphere, and I can't really draw this, but you would have a dotted sphere. You guys know the solid and dotted lines that we had before, right? Remember when you had drew stuff like that as opposed to that, right? If you had less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you would draw a solid line. Uh, but if it was strictly less than or greater than, it was a dotted line, remember that? You would have to make this a dotted sphere, so to speak, which means you're not counting the sphere itself. And likewise, if, that, if you had strictly less than here, you'd have to have a dotted sphere for the outside, meaning don't count the sphere itself. I can't draw it, but you got the concept. Okay, 37 is a little bit past eight. I'll be done. So uh, I'll maybe take some questions in the chat, sneak in a little bit of the next section and then we'll end. Okay. 37. X squared plus Z squared less than or equal to nine. Okay. Remember, these are right off the homework. A little bit less homework you gotta do. X squared plus Z squared equals nine. Okay, before I show you the answer, which is already too late, but imagine we were only doing the X, Z plane. Yes, we were doing the X, Y plane, but pretend it's just X, Z. Then X squared plus Z squared equals nine would be a circle, right? How about less than or equal to nine? Well, you count everything in between. Suppose all along we didn't do X and Y, we did X and Z. It's just a change in letter. Here's X squared plus Z squared equals nine. Here's X squared plus Z squared less than or equal to nine, right? Like eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, right? Now, bring Y into the picture. Let Y change from zero to one to two to negative one, okay? Take this picture. You kind of have to imagine it. 
Here is the XZ plane, that circle. Take that circle and move it left and right. So maybe here Y is zero, Y is one, Y is negative one. So you end up with this infinite cylinder. So you end up with a cylinder with the circle X squared plus Z squared equals nine, Y ranging through all real numbers and all the points inside also, okay? So it's not just the hollowed cylinder that you can crawl through, it's all the points in between. So imagine, just take this circle. Imagine this circle, I can fake it and go like this. Okay, take the circle, oh, do I have anything round here? <laughs> take a coin, take that coin and just move it left and right. That's what you end up with. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. It's an infinite cylinder, only you have all the points inside the cylinder too. So if I just say cylinder, infinite cylinder, it's only the point on the side, but you can crawl through it like a tunnel. But because it says less than or equal to, you're counting all the points inside too. As you can see folks, there's a lot of imagination here. We have to think in our minds what's going on in three dimensions because we can't really draw in 3D. Okay? I mean, even when we're, you know, the book's gonna show you nice pictures like that and like that and like that. But really, this is printed on two dimensional paper, is it not? So we're trying to create the illusion of a three dimensional object on a two dimensional paper. Right? And that's all I'm doing. And that's all, you know, I'm trying to pretend this is 3D, right? Left wall, right wall, floor. Hey, this is ultimately still on paper. The paper is two dimensions. So yes, that does require a little bit of artwork. I'm not grading you on art. Uh, I'm guessing many of you are better artists than I am. I can't draw, you know, to save my life. So that's the, so I became a math teacher. Okay. So, but anyway, so that's the idea behind this. But yeah, we have to kind of visualize all this stuff in three dimensions. Okay. All right. I'm finished. Okay. I'm going to sneak in very little of the next section. I'll go to the chat for any questions, and then we will dismiss. It's only 8:06, so we're good for that. Okay. So again, those of you trying to add. Uh, you have to send me um, that, what do they call that form? Add cl class add requests. Okay. That way I have your email address also because everybody else, I'll send the video over um, Canvas announcements. But for those of you that are not on road, you're not in Canvas announcements. So the only way I can get it for you is to email you. Okay. The video should be ready by tomorrow, hopefully. And I've shown you, you say, I don't have the book yet. I already showed you all the homework problems. Right? So you know what to do. So do, all the problems, or maybe I should say all the rest of the problems, and just show me again. By the way, you don't have to reorder the numbers. This is true for everybody, okay? You don't have to reorder the numbers, you know, three, five, seven. You know, if it's out of order, you say, man, I don't want to reorder. I'll just do all the other problems. That's okay. So I did what? Three, seven, nine. Just keep it like that and just go back and do the ones I didn't do, five, you know, 11A or whatever. You, know, you don't have to reorder it. It's for your own study purposes anyway. Okay, so what's going to happen in 12.2, I'll talk very quickly about that. We're going to learn about vectors. Now, I know some of you have already had vectors before, maybe in pre-calc, maybe in physics. Okay. So we're going to have vectors. Okay. We're going to illustrate a vector with a starting point and an ending point with an arrow. Okay. Vector V, for instance. Okay. So from A to B from C to D. So these are vectors. These are considered equal vectors. Okay, They have the same magnitude, same direction. So a vector has a magnitude and also has a direction. So that away, for instance. Okay, so we will add vectors. Okay, You can see by adding vectors, you're just putting the head of one to the tail of the other. U, V, U plus V. Okay, so we're gonna add vectors. We're going to multiply vectors by a scalar. See, what is a scalar? It's the same as a number. See, I never used the word scalar before. Right. Uh, scalar, you only use it when it's in a context of vectors. Okay. So vector is not a number, but if you want to talk about a number, then it's a scalar. So scalar multiplication is you multiply a number times a vector. So C times V. So here's V. 2v, which makes sense. So what's 2v? Same direction, 
double the magnitude. Half V, same direction, half the magnitude. Negative V, opposite direction. Makes sense. So you'd be subtracting vectors. U minus V is the same as U plus negative V, the opposite vector. Opposite vectors have the same magnitude, but opposite direction, as you might guess. Okay, we'll be breaking vectors into the components. There are X and Y components in two dimensions, X, Y, and Z components in three dimensions, as you might guess. Okay, we'll be talking about the length of a vector or magnitude Sometimes norm, N-O-R-M, is also used for magnitude or length. Okay, sometimes I would say norm, I say norm because it's the shortest. So if you hear me say norm, that's also magnitude or length. Okay, it's basically a Pythagorean theorem. Two dimensions, square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared. Three dimensions, square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared plus A3 squared. So if you're gonna write this on your formula sheet, just put this one, because in, you know, the more general one is three dimensions. So in two dimension, then the last one's just zero. That's all. all right. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna say right now. There's more stuff, but that little brief introduction is good enough for us at this time. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Let me check the chat for what else you have. Maybe it's just to all of you there. Okay, stuff about my mic, I got it. Okay. Uh, we're good. If you disconnect and connect, that's perfectly fine. You know, that happened to me. Last semester, I had a whole week when my computer was down. Okay. <clears throat> what is the reason why we choose the x-axis to point out? It's a very good question. Um, we won't know the reason why now completely, uh, but the only thing I want to say is we want z to be considered the height. Okay. So we are changing x and y. Yes, right now at this very beginning stage, it's dumb. When I first learned that, I thought, you know, yeah, why don't you just leave X and Y alone and let Z go this way? Okay. Ultimately, we'll learn later on, we want Z to represent the height. I've already talked about that a little. So in X and Y, Y was the height. Okay. For now, we're gonna let X and Y be the same. The X and Y are kind of the same if you pretend, think of the floor, okay? And imagine on the floor, your normal X and Y, and then just come up for Z. So we want Z to be the height. I know I didn't really answer your question there, but, uh, it should become more obvious a little bit later. <clears throat> okay, for the material that we're gonna cover, how much of it will be exclusively meaningful in three dimensions? Quite a bit of it. Okay, quite a bit of it applies only to 3D. To some stuff that's in 3D that we cannot do in 2D. Okay. Um, can some of this be applied to multiple dimensions? Yes. Okay, once in a while I will refer to 4D, 5D. Okay, we can't draw it. We don't know, you know in our mind, rack our brain. How do I visualize 4D? Well, you can talk about an order triple. A very easy order triple is X, Y, Z, T, X, Y, Z, and time, right? So if I have a point in space right here, right? Well, you might have X, Y, Z at, you know, what is it, 8, 12 p.m., you know, San Francisco time. It may not be the same as X, Y, Z, T uh, at uh, six o'clock. And or maybe it refers to temperature, the temperature change. It's the same point, but it's also a function of the fourth dimension time. Right? So if you have a different, you got the same point in space, but if you have a different time, then of course the temperature might change. So the temperature function might be four variables, X, Y, Z, T, right? Okay, and let's see, can I go over number seven again? Okay, uh, yeah, I can talk about it real quickly. Okay, X plus Y equals two. So the best way for me to explain it is in two dimensions, this was a line, right? If X is two, Y is zero and vice versa. Put it on the floor. Imagine on the floor, Z equals zero, two, zero, zero, two. So here's my floor, two, zero, 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 two, zero. There should be a zero there. Okay. Now change Z, okay? So take this line on the floor, okay, there, I put it on the floor and change Z. So let Z go up and it goes down and you end up with a plane. So here's two zero 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 two zero. I just went up one unit. I moved up one floor. Two zero one zero two one. And this maybe is two zero two 
zero two two. And way up there is zero is two zero million and zero two a million. And way down there is two zero negative a million and zero two negative a million. But it still satisfies this because it doesn't matter what z is, right? So you end up with a plane right here. Okay. And I think I've caught up. Um, what time is it? 8.15? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, any, any other questions? Otherwise, we're done, folks. I did have a question for about number 15. Okay. Um, did you mean to make the center? Did you do did you do the center at with with the problem four three negative one or three eight one? Okay, maybe I wrote it wrong. Was, shouldn't it be an X four minus three. It says the center is three eight one. Right. Okay, so that means I know automatically it's x minus three, blah, blah, blah. So I think I have it okay. This is the center. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. It touches the point four, three, negative one. So that's a point on the sphere. This is not a point on the sphere. This is the center of the sphere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you can always unmute yourself, but if you don't want to do that, you can put it in the chat. Anybody else, please? Otherwise, we're done. All right, that'll do it for tonight, folks. So those of you trying to add, you know what to do. Okay, and we'll see everybody on Thursday. Okay, so hope we had a good Thank first you. day. Thank All you. right, so good night. Thank you. And we'll see everybody Thank next you. time. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hello? Are my working? <laughs>